Right to Jacksonville, Florida, because there's been a change of heart, apparently, by the Romney campaign. As you can see, people are now being led out of the room where Governor Romney was expected to speak live and in person about the events in Libya and in Egypt. But now we've been informed by the Romney campaign that he'll issue a statement only that will come your way in about 20 minutes. So you can see people being led out of the room. They had set up the stage and everything. The podium was there. The flags were set up behind the podium. And uh, we have a producer on the scene. She's trying to get information about why Romney had this change of heart. Okay, let's head to Washington now and check in with Elise Labbitt. She's our State Department correspondent, our State Department uh, producer, I should say. So, Elise, uh, Hillary Clinton's expected to talk in about, oh, about 30 seconds, at least we think so. What do you expect she'll say? Um, well, first of all, I think, uh, Carol, she's going to talk about what a sad day this is here at the State Department. It, it, you know, a U.S. ambassador killed in action. You haven't anything like that since the late 70s. And so the State Department is really reeling right now. I'm getting emails from a lot of uh, colleagues of Chris Siemens, just friends of his I've spoken on the phone this morning, talking about how sad they are, what a day this is that somebody that cared so much, as we've been talking about all morning, cared so much about Libya, would die um, in action trying to help this country start anew. And so I think Secretary Clinton will talk about what a sad day it is for the family at the State Department, condolences to the family, but also um, recommit to trying to help this troubled region um, find its way. I mean, there's going to be a lot of thinking about what the U.S. will be doing um, as far as policy in the Middle East, also making sure that everybody knows that U.S. is doing everything it can to protect those diplomatic facilities um, and diplomatic personnel overseas. And I also think she's going to want to try and tone down the rhetoric, tone down um, the hyperbole that's going on right now. There's a lot of talk, a lot of anti-American sentiment. And so I think Secretary Clinton is going to try and strike a very careful balance um, in terms of voicing sympathy, voicing sadness, but also trying to just calm everybody down a little bit. I know the Libyan prime minister came out and condemned these attacks and, you know, vowed to find the people who did this. Will that, I don't know, will that calm things down in that country? Will that help? Well, I think that the U.S. is going to be looking to the Libyans to find out who's responsible, but also to make sure that those diplomatic facilities are taken care of. I mean, it's really job number one of a host country. At least let me interrupt. Uh, Secretary of State Clinton is now speaking. Yesterday, our U.S. diplomatic post in Benghazi, Libya, was attacked. Heavily armed militants assaulted the compound and set fire to our buildings. American and Libyan security personnel battled the attackers together. Four Americans were killed. They included Sean Smith, a Foreign Service Information Management Officer, and our ambassador to Libya, Chris Stevens. We are still making next of kin notifications for the other two individuals. This is an attack that should shock the conscience of people of all faiths around the world. We condemn in the strongest terms this senseless act of violence, and we send our prayers to the families, friends, and colleagues of those we've lost. All over the world, every day, America's diplomats and development experts risk their lives in the service of our country and our values because they believe that the United States must be a force for peace and progress in the world, that these aspirations are worth striving and sacrificing for. Alongside our men and women in uniform, they represent the best traditions of a bold and generous nation. In the lobby of this building, the State Department, the names of those who have fallen in the line of duty are inscribed in marble. Our hearts break over each one. And now, because of this tragedy, we have new heroes to honor and more friends to mourn. Chris Stevens fell in love with the Middle East as a young Peace Corps volunteer teaching English in Morocco.
He joined the Foreign Service, learned languages, won friends for America in distant places, and made other people's hopes his own. In the early days of the Libyan Revolution, I asked Chris to be our envoy to the rebel opposition. He arrived on a cargo ship in the port of Benghazi and began building our relationships with Libya's revolutionaries. He risked his life to stop a tyrant, then gave his life trying to help build a better Libya. The world needs more Chris Stevenses. I spoke with his sister Anne this morning and told her that he will be remembered as a hero by many nations. Sean Smith was an Air Force veteran. He spent 10 years as an information management officer in the State Department. He was posted at The Hague and was in Libya on a brief temporary assignment. He was a husband to his wife, Heather, with whom I spoke this morning. He was a father to two young children, Samantha and Nathan. They will grow up being proud of the service their father gave to our country, service that took him from Pretoria to Baghdad and finally to Benghazi. The mission that drew Chris and Sean and their colleagues to Libya is both noble and necessary. And we and the people of Libya honor their memory by carrying it forward. This is not easy. Today, many Americans are asking. Indeed, I asked myself, how could this happen? How could this happen in a country we helped liberate, in a city we helped save from destruction? This question reflects just how complicated and, at times, how confounding the world can be. But we must be clear-eyed even in our grief. This was an attack by a small and savage group, not the people or government of Libya. Everywhere Chris and his team went in Libya, in a country scarred by war and tyranny, they were hailed as friends and partners. And when the attack came yesterday, Libyans stood and fought to defend our post. Some were wounded. Libyans carried Chris's body to the hospital, and they helped rescue and lead other Americans to safety. And last night, when I spoke with the president of Libya, he strongly condemned the violence and pledged every effort to protect our people and pursue those responsible. The friendship between our countries, born out of shared struggle, will not be another casualty of this attack. A free and stable Libya is still in America's interest and security. And we will not turn our back on that. Nor will we rest until those responsible for these attacks are found and brought to justice. We are working closely with the Libyan authorities to move swiftly and surely. We are also working with partners around the world to safeguard other American embassies, consulates, and citizens. There will be more time later to reflect, but today we have work to do. There is no higher priority than protecting our men and women wherever they serve. We are working to determine the precise motivations and methods of those who carried out this assault. Some have sought to justify this vicious behavior along with the protest that took place at our embassy in Cairo yesterday as a response to inflammatory material posted on the Internet. 
America's commitment to religious tolerance goes back to the very beginning of our nation. But let me be clear, there is no justification for this. None. Violence like this is no way to honor religion or faith. And as long as there are those who would take innocent life in the name of God, the world will never know a true and lasting peace. It is especially difficult that this happened on September 11th. It's an anniversary that means a great deal to all Americans. Every year on that day, we are reminded that our work is not yet finished, that the job of putting an end to violent extremism and building a safe and stable world. But September 11th means even more than that. It is a day on which we remember thousands of American heroes, the bonds that connect all Americans wherever we are on this earth, and the values that see us through every storm. And now it is a day on which we will remember Sean, Chris, and their colleagues. May God bless them, and may God bless the thousands of Americans working in every corner of the world who make this country the greatest force for peace, prosperity, and progress, and a force that has always stood for human dignity, the greatest force the world has ever known. And may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton talking about the attacks in Benghazi, Libya, the attacks that cost the life of uh, an American ambassador, Ambassador Stevens. Let's uh, head back to Washington and check in with Elise Lavitt. Uh, the thing that struck me about uh, Secretary Clinton's speech, she said that this Libyan attack, this attack in Benghazi, was the work of a small and savage group not the government or people of Libya. What was she trying to get across there? Well, what she's trying to get across, uh, Carol, is what the U.S. has been talking about and fearing in this whole Arab Spring, is that basically even as the, the country and even as these countries elect many from Islamic parties and also people that are, that are Muslim and religious, um, these extremists are trying to hijack these Arab revolutions. And so we saw it in Libya. We are, there's a lot of concern that that's happening in Egypt. And what she's trying to say is the U.S. will always stand on the side of those Libyans, those Egyptians, those whatever country you want to name, um, if they're going to fight for the democratic values that they said that they were fighting for when they overthrew these dictators. The U.S. stood by, stood by these protesters, stood by these social movements, these youth, as they tried to overthrow these dictators for a better life. And that's the life that... Chris Stevens that others are trying to help give them. And so what she's trying to say is there are some groups in Libya, in other countries that are trying to hijack this, extremists, and, and we've seen, I mean, Libya is still not a stable country yet. It's on its way, but it's still not stable. And so the question is, um, are these governments able to secure the country from these extremist groups that are clearly operating in areas of chaos where the government, where the security services are not fully formed um, to hijack and make these type of attacks. Seeing it in Egypt, too, as we saw in the embassy yesterday. Um, does the U.S. feel that the government of Mohamed Morsi, the Muslim Brotherhood, was responsible for this attack? No, they don't. They're going the U.S. is going to continue to work with these governments, with these people, but they also have to have a responsibility to make sure that these groups do not hijack the entire democratic process as they keep moving forward. Elise Lavitt reporting live from Washington for us. Thanks so much. Uh, we want to head out to Jacksonville, Florida, check in with our producer on the scene there, Rachel Streitfield. Um, Governor Romney was supposed to make a, a statement in person, but then suddenly changed his mind. Why? Well, Carol, he, actually he's just pulled up on site. His motorcade has just arrived. And what we've seen, we've watched, um, he was planning to have an event here with supporters, and we've watched that turn from a rally type of atmosphere to a more solemn atmosphere. Um, campaign staffers took down streamers that, were, that would have been behind him. They put up curtains and they put up flags. 
So now we are waiting for Governor Romney to come in and make a statement to the press about the situation in Libya. And then we're expecting for them to bring all those supporters back in. Those supporters have been escorted out. They're, they're expecting them to be brought in and for Romney to hold that event, that campaign event, just as, as was planned this morning. Okay, so just so I'm clear, because, of course, we've been getting changing information all morning long, the governor will make this short statement on the situation in Libya and Egypt in person, yes. alone in yes. a room. Right. Um, we, we do have a video of it. Maybe they could show you. Um, right now we're seeing a blue curtain. There are four American flags. They're bringing more American flags out, um, and there's a podium. Romney will come in. We're expecting him momentarily. He's outside the site. So he will come in, he will make this statement, and then I assume that they're going to reset the room um, and bring those supporters who are now waiting outside back in so that they can, they can hear from the governor as well. But first, we will hear him make a statement on the Middle Eastern issues. Any idea of what that uh, statement might entail? All I can tell you right now, Carol, is there's been some controversy over the statement that the Romney campaign released last night. Um, Romney said that he was outraged by the attacks on the diplomatic missions in Libya and in Egypt and by that death that was in Egypt. But this was before that we learned about the deaths about, of the ambassador and the other three, the, the three deaths. Um, and in this statement, he had some heated words for President Obama. He said it's disgraceful that the Obama administration's first response was not to condemn the attack on our diplomatic mission, but to sympathize with those who waged the attacks. That seems to be in reference to that statement that was put out by the U.S. Embassy in Egypt, um, talking about the, the, the video that was released that was um, targeting Islam. So again, that mommy statement where he called, where he called um, that that response disgraceful. That was before we learned about the death of the ambassador. Right, and and just to be clear, Governor Romney didn't change his mind about making a statement. He just thought it would be more appropriate in, in a in a more subdued setting. I mean, that's certainly what we what we've seen happen here. They've they've turned this into a more solemn event as they learned more news about what was coming out. All right, Rachel, thank you so much for being with us. And, of course, when uh, Governor Romney is behind the podium, uh, we'll go back to Jacksonville Live. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more.